Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Karen and Toss. This is the podcast slash YouTube channel where I, your host, Karen and Hines, film critic and journalist, speak to film creatives around the world about their work, the industry, and what inspires them. And this is one of my interviews for the 2023 New York Asian Film Festival. And today, I'm very happy to be joined by filmmaker Sung Ying Ting to talk about his film, The Abandoned. We are also joined by producer David Tong. And our interpreter is Vincent. So he's off screen, but you'll be hearing Vincent doing the interpreting for that, which I'm very appreciative of. So before we begin the interview, I want to thank both um, Yi Ting and David for joining me today. Thank you so much. And she should have this every time. She she. Um, okay, so I always like to begin my interviews by asking my guests to say a bit about themselves and what got them involved in the industry. So, um, Ying Ting, we'll begin with you. What start? What started you on your path to becoming a filmmaker? 那一开始每次节目都会让这个参与人先做一些自我的介绍，能谈一下说自己怎么开始往电影的这条路去发展，嗯，怎么会有这样一个想法，想要拍片，然后想当电影导演。哦，其其实这个当电影导演这个呃决定对我来说应该应该说对普遍的电影导演来说，可能是来的有点晚。我大概是在即将大学毕业的时候才做了这个决定，那也是在呃求学过程中看到了几部呃很棒的电影，我们
films. So because of that, I had a lot of opportunities to go to international film festivals, uh, to to really do reports on those films and film festivals and uh, especially Cannes Film Festival. I've been there so many times, I cannot even count. So uh, because of those opportunities, I have the chance to really watch a lot of good films and fell in love with films. And these films are from different parts of the world. And I really think that uh, having watching so many great films around the world, I do think that uh, we can also do that in Taiwan to really put together great films. And I, I do think that um, because of the fact that knowing that uh, different countries and they are focused a lot on new directors uh, that they want to cultivate and really produce wonderful films uh, from these different countries. And I want to play a role uh, to see whether or not I can help Taiwanese directors, especially new directors, to put their films out there for the whole world to see. And for this particular opportunity, collaborating with Inting is because that uh, Inting actually wrote the script for this particular film. And I read the script. I loved the film. And that is when I decided to uh, start to help him out with the financing part of the game and also start to helping out with the casting and that's the uh, and also the rest of the what I need to do as a producer because I really want to make this come into fruition to make sure that such a great film, such a great script will become an actual film. Uh, yeah, um, Taiwan has been producing some really great films as well as dramas. I watch Taiwanese dramas. I've been watching The Big White Lie. So for anyone who's listening, go and check it out. Um, but yeah, but Taiwan has been doing great things with um, young filmmakers in particular. Um, was, was it? There was a film that I screened last year, I believe it was from TIFF. Um, that was really, really well, as, um, really, really good as well. So I'm always looking forward to speaking to young filmmakers like Inting and not getting into the game. And I think have a really, uh, from what I've seen, have a really distinct eye for the stories they want to tell. So he actually likes Taiwanese directors and Mm, yeah, I just remember the name of the, I interviewed the director for God Damasura, which was actually a Taiwanese film that showed that tip. That was the one I was trying to remember just now. <laughs> and what's the, the name of the film? Um, It's called God Dam Asura. You know how we would say God Dam? So it's, it's like God Dam Asura. So um, I'm not sure how you would say in um, Pinin, but that's the that's the English name. Hey. Yeah, we'll, 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 look at, we'll, we'll look into it. <laughs> it's pretty really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so like, I'm, like, I'm very not excited to talk about this film, The Abandoned. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm always drawn to films that talk a lot about the human emotion and about grief and loss. That's a very unintentional mm -hmm. thing. Um, but this film... I think it is about grief and loss and love and acceptance in different ways. But um, the story initially starts, it, it is about the about these women, these um, Thai and um, Indonesian women who've been kidnapped and are being murdered. And it is talking about the loss of these women from society and how they go missing. But I also think it's about the loss mm -hmm. of romantic love, like the lead character, Wu Jie, She's grieving, you know, and so I want to first ask um, Eating about crafting a story about loss and different types of loss. There's societal loss with the loss of these um, migrant women, and then also the loss of a loved one with um, Wujie's story. 那觉得超市这部片里面感觉它是非常的有关于就是失去了一个什么东西那就是为了在失去的过程中常去自己心情上去做调制或者没有办法做调试没有办法从那边走出来比方说这两个层面的失去一方面的失去就是这些外来移民
。嗯，其实应该说，对于这一群呃，台湾称作移工。呃，尤其在电影里面，他们甚至是黑工，就是呃，他们离乡背井，然后飞了几千公里，带着不同的文化语言来到一个陌生的地方来，是非常有勇气的一个行为。嗯，那那他们的他们最重要的事情就是活下去，带着梦想回到他们的家乡。嗯，我觉得张哲力量非常强大。嗯，那相较。而下的另外一个我们的女主角，呃，她是几乎生无可恋的一个状态，她最爱的人、挚爱的人离开她了、嗯，然后在这个自杀者遗嘱的一个这种情绪下，她很可能就很快的会是另外一个杀了自己的那个人。嗯，呃，所以我想她是在一个因缘机会下，她本来想结束她自己生命的。呃，时刻遇上了另外一个已经死掉的尸体，而是而且他是带着很大的力量想活下去的那个人。嗯、那张子的撞击，我很好奇会发生发展成什么样的一个故事，然后可以触发张子的一个女警，她怎么看待死亡跟活着？嗯哼。So yes, very much the story and the narrative and the film is about the foreign migrant workers, and specifically these are illegal. Foreign migrant workers that they are,、um, you know, people who travel hundreds of miles to a completely different countries and without knowing the language, and it took a lot of courage for them to make that journey. And I do think that for a lot of them, they just want to survive. They have every reason to live, and for them is to then will be able to go back to their home countries to fulfill their dreams that they are pursuing. Whereas the on the other hand, you have someone, a detective, that、um, she was、uh, so distraught by this particular suicide and losing a loved ones that the most, the dearest person,、uh, someone she loved the most,、uh, just、uh, as a result of a suicide,、uh, disappear. And、um, so I do think that that also trigger her. To、uh, start thinking about this downward spiral, to think of、uh, almost to a point of killing herself as a result of someone、uh, killing himself, and so I do think that at that moment to have this、um, uh, connection between these two. Characters. One is someone who's so distraught and almost killing herself, and on the other hand, you have someone who is a corpse. She had every reason to live, and she wanted to live so much. And then, at that point, that they connect with each other, and I do think that it create a, a great、uh, dramatic impact and、uh, a, a good way to tell her story, not only about the characters, but also to really examine what does it mean to live and what does it mean to die. Yes,、um, th- I actually put it in my notes because、um, I actually put in my notes that it takes as m- much courage to live as as it does to want to die. And for these for these characters for these women、um, for like the migrant workers coming over from、um, other Southeast Asian countries to Taiwan, it takes tremendous courage to leave of everything that you know and come to a country where. Not only they're looking to have work, and but they know that they could be exploited. But they're taking that risk because their their life is worth taking that risk. Whereas for Wujie, she, she doesn't think her life is worth keeping. You know, she thinks without this、um, her her husband, that life isn't worth go,、um, going on. So I think I, I think it was so、uh, poignant that you use the death of of one woman for another woman to find her purpose and her meaning. That she's. It, it kind of speaks to how everyone has a purpose in life, and for and for、uh, Wardy, her her purpose was cut short by this man who killed her. But for、um, for Wujie, she saw the she saw getting、um, justice for Wardy as her new reason for continuing. I think it's really, uh, just like you said, not only to live, to survive, to live is a big courage. Actually, to die is also a big courage. So, I think that. 在这些啊外来移民到台湾，其实真的是非常勇气，才能到那边完全只是知道是会被啊、呃、别人欺负，会被别人这样子榨榨取他们的老公，然后呃非常危险。但是他还是拼了命来过来这里。那吴杰的话，他觉得就是完全已经找不到生活的意义，就没有想到说自己有什么值得活的事情。但是呢，因为这样子的关系，两个在一起之后
，反而透过他们两个的撞击和碰撞，突然让吴杰又重重新要找回自己生，有生命的意义是在哪？因为看到一个真的是为了要要生活，然后为了要求生，然后不计不顾一切的到台湾来啊、呃、从事义工的工作。那因为这样的方式，然后突然因为啊、呃、这这次要被被杀了之后，然后被弃尸，就完全的啊、呃、这个梦想就不见了。反而就是让吴杰重新找回生命的意义，而且会觉得好像是说为了要争取他的啊。呃让他追求他这个这个正义，追求他这样让可以帮他洗冤，或者说帮他找到这个凶手的的方式呢，可以让自己重新找到自己生命的意义。所以我觉得这非常，他觉得是非常棒的一个连接。Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so um, another parallel that I really that I picked up in the film that I want us to talk about is um, we talked. I talked about the we talked about the courage that these women and the choices in in staying alive. But there's another um another I think parallel between the two women, which is about people noticing their pain. For instance, for um Wu Jie, she's she's clearly suffering. From depression, she's se severely depressed because for someone to take to make the choice that she had wanted to make, which is to commit suicide, you have to be at a point where you think that there's nowhere out, which is a form of severe depression. And she's trying to fool everyone and thinking that she's fine. She has all of these people paying attention to her who are worried about her. But for Wari and for the other women like her, there's really no one really looking. For them, except for Wari's boyfriend, but there's really no one really looking for them because they live on the outskirts of society. They're migrants, and like in general, society doesn't really pay attention to illegal workers. They kind of exist as ghosts in the society. You know, they're doing all of this work for way below minimum wage, and they're invisible to the people around them. So you have these two women once again. One is being looked at, and one is being worried about, and one is being cared for. Well, another one. She's she's just she like no one is looking. No one is really missing her. No, and for the other victims, no one is missing them. You know, they're all they're all missing, but no one is really missing them. So, um, talk also about that parallel in the stories about how society how society views women. You know, some are discarded and some are kind of like worried and held close. 他觉得另外还有一个平行线，就是这个两个角色里面，除了说你。讲到这个勇气方面，在生和死的选择之内，其实是连结的。另外一个连结方式是在痛苦的这方面是，呃，其中一个叫做无解的痛苦。虽然他就是因为他经过这样子的一个呃爱人自杀的方式，然后变成重度的忧忧郁，然后一直到最后有自杀这样念头，甚至要啊付诸实施。但是这个表面上的这些重度忧郁啊，或是甚至要自杀，是很多人是去关心他的，到都是看得到的。很多人会这样主动的想要去接触他，说突然啊想要去了解到说能不能帮他忙，能不能帮他走出来。但是呢。以呃，这个移工被杀了之后被弃尸，或者是其他人啊、呃，也是被弃尸这些女人，其实他们其实是也有更加的痛苦，但是呢，他们像鬼一样，非常的边缘化，好像根本没有人会去在乎他们，看到他们的痛苦，哪怕呢完全就被忽视掉在整个这个社会上。所以你们提到一下，是不是也也有类似这样子想法？说虽然都是女性，然后都是经都有一些痛苦的存在，但是为什么有些人是被看到的，那会会被照顾到的，会被被被想要帮他们解决或是照顾照顾他们？但另外呢？呃，也许因为是他们是边缘人的关系，也许他们是外面一个，是完全就变成了一个啊啊视而不见的鬼魂。嗯，呃，其实我们一开始这个剧本啊、呃，这个电影呃的中文名字叫《野鬼》，嗯、呃，也就是孤魂野鬼的那两个字啊、呃，其实就是想想想想聊聊这样子的一个状态，不论是在。物呃物质世界上的这种不被在乎，或者是心理的像像是孤魂野鬼般的存在，那、嗯、其实想透过这样子的一个呃外在世界跟内在心理来聊这件事情，即便即便呃吴姐这一块，她的因为她毕竟是生存在台湾，生活在台湾，有更大的连接，更多的朋友去 take care 她，可是这不见得能让她。不是孤魂野鬼，嗯哼，呃，相相对来说，另外一块他们是更容易在实际上被人家忽视的，嗯哼，呃，这一群黑工们，嗯哼，那我觉得很实在的原因就是
异乡人嘛，异乡人他们人人跟人之间的连接更更更稀薄，或者是说。即便他在这边有黑工有很多朋友，同样也是黑工，可是为了他们自己的利益之下，他们可能也不愿意去把他的死亡或者是他的这个消息给给给正式跟跟，就是他没办法跟官方呈现。嗯、那是不是是不是他们就永远会被忘记？我觉得这不一定，因为故事没提到。可是我心心里想的是，我知道有一些义工或黑工。他们他们的朋友面呃遭遇到死亡之后，他们是没办法去，他们自己也是黑工，他们没办法去报警。可是他们可能会找一些，譬如说呃，像基督教可能会找牧师来临终祷告。如果是有这个佛教或者是这个别的宗教，可能会找别的这个神职人员来替他们呃祈福。那可能在他们心中是是是存在的，可是。可是，在整个我们的荒荒郊野岭，可能有蛮多这样子的孤魂野鬼在、mm-hmm. 在台湾吧。嗯嗯。So funny that you said that because the, when I was writing the script, the original title of this film is actually called Wild Ghosts. And what I'm trying to capture with this film very much about not only what does it mean to be to become wild ghost, not only. Materialistically speaking, but also emotionally speaking, and also examine how the external society will have an impact on the internal emotions of all the characters that I am depicting in this particular film. So, if you take a look at the character of Wu Jie, even though she does have friends and that kind of social networks to prevent her to become wild ghosts, so to speak, that become so desperate and so.、Uh, In despair that、uh, she wanted to、uh, com-、uh, commit suicide, but at the same time, it's like even with these friends, even with these social networks, they are no in no competition with her inner struggles and internal turmoils that、uh, that she just couldn't get over. And I, I do think that it's a very good contrast to the. The other side of the story is that you have these illegal migrant workers that they are not. Uh, they are alone. They do have other migrant worker friends. They do have that type of people that they、uh, work with. But I do think that because of their special、uh, identities as an illegal migrant workers, that they have to take care of their own self interests, and therefore a lot of them they、uh, chose not to report it, or that they dare not to report these crimes or these issues、uh, to the government or to the government officials or people who are in charge of. Of、uh, dealing with these issues, so in a way, is that you know on the on you know on the surface, it looks as if that they have no、uh, any type of recourse when they are experiencing、uh, issues such as being murdered and become the victims of、uh, crimes in Taiwan. But I do think that、uh, you know it, they they are. There's a well. There's a way. A lot of them, even though that they don't report this to the police officers or to people who are in charge of these issues, they will find a way to somehow,、uh, for example,、uh, yeah, find the、uh, pastors the, through the church so that will give the, these victims last rites、uh, before they pass, or that if they are、um, Buddhist, then they might find people who can pray for them so that they will have a better passing.、Uh, so I do think that a lot of them,、uh, even though that they might not be able to、uh, do the the proper way of reporting crimes and to make these things to be seen, but at the same time they also find other ways to take care of those、uh, people who are in the same positions as not only migrant workers but also illegal migrant workers. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry about that. My dog. Stop it. Stop. She always does this. Um. Okay. So um, something else I want both of you not to talk about is the casting because I think for a film the casting is so important, especially for the character of uh Wu Jie, where she's because she, her try her. Character arc is so、um, I think so、um, fascinating because she starts off from a moment of the film literally opens with her at her lowest, like emotionally and mentally. She's she she thinks she has nowhere to go, so she's completely desperate. She feels completely alone. She feels isolated. She feels、um, lonely because she's lost her husband, and she feels there's no one there for her. 
And then as she, she doesn't want to get into this case because she just wants to be left alone. She just wants to like fall away from society. But then as she she gets more involved with the case looking for Wari and then realizing that it's a serial killer case, she realizes she's found her purpose again. So you need an actress who who can play someone who's completely um, alone, but then also completely filled with um, she's not obsessive, but she's she's so filled with so much purpose. She is like now desperate for something else. And that desperation is to solve this murder. And then there's the moments where in the flashbacks, we see how she was as when she was married, you know, she was happy and she was laughing and bright. So you have to have, find an actor. So talk about um, casting uh, Janine Chang to play the character of Wuji, because I think she's, she did such a fantastic job with this film. So I want both you, David, and Yi to talk about casting her and the process of finding your lead actress. 他觉得宣导这方面尤其是吴杰这个角色有张军宁这样来演绎从一个最新情绪最低落最孤独最只想被呃只想只是一个人处理自己事情完全不跟其他人有呃真正有意义的联系的这样子的状况一直到最后变成
。那当然，我很高兴的是，其实最重要的是曾荫庭跟张钧甯在讨论剧本的互动之中，他协助张钧甯，张钧甯也协助他，嗯，让这个角色有了更多的一个火花，嗯，更具有说服力，嗯。气魂的英文，气魂的英文怎么讲？气魂的英文，我来查。啊 ，so so 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 yeah. So as I mentioned before, that、uh, also the director mentioned that、um, uh, Jinin Zhang has been wonderful、uh, and also very mature as an actor,、mm -hmm. and I do think that she has a unique quality of being、um, at once soft with very、um, pronounced grit. So when you see her, it, it's a it's a great combination of both qualities, and I do think that、uh, my experience with her、uh, for the previous film by the name of Soul,、uh, she was also the the female lead for that particular film,、uh, opposite of Zhang Zhen, and、uh, I do think that that particular collaboration make me feel that I'm very confident that she can be a great.、Um, uh, Cast member for, uh, uh, for the abandoned. The reason for it is because that,、uh, as I mentioned, she's so mature as an actress, and she also have that quality of both the soft and the hard, the 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 the, the fragility at the same time also the grits、um, that she、uh, she. Just have the air of、uh, being able to combine these two. Not only that, they also、uh, somehow help each other out to make the story and make the character even more、uh, developed through the interactions and collaboration between the director and also Jinin Zhang. They、uh, really push each other to a point of making the stories and making the characters even more comprehensive, even more. Three dimensional, so it is definitely a wonderful collaboration. Yes,、um, I agree because this character is one where you understand her grief, but then you also want her to get out of it as quickly as possible because you don't want her to slide back into where she was before. Because as I was watching the film, I just kept thinking、um, she's putting herself in dangerous situations because. Whereas she wasn't able to commit suicide before, but she's looking for, I, th I think, a way to harm herself because she has a, a, a she had, she kind of has survivor's guilt, and she feels that she should have died along with her husband. So she, so I think Jenny did a fantastic job showing this these aspects of this character because you sympathize with her and you want her to be okay, and a lot of that has to do with while this character may seem rude or、um, or standoffish, you understand where she's coming from, and Jenny really puts that. Um, relatability into the character because you just want her to be okay right up until the end of the film. 嗯，他觉得这个他真的做做的非常好到位的原因，是因为他觉得可以把那、呃、所有观众看到这个，尤其是我在看这部片的时候，会觉得完全可以了解到他的痛苦，而且可以知道他，呃，而且不但是，而且会会一直想要让他能不能从那个痛苦里面走出来，因为已经跟这个角色已经联系起来了，但是呢。一直看到他在在后面的剧情里面是不断就是往危险的方方啊地方去走啊，然后去几乎到自残的，然后进一步好像又要把自己放在一个可以死快要死的那种地方啊、呃，觉得好像啊呃,呃就很不舍，然后很想把他从里面把他拉出来，所以这种可以完全跟角色已经有这样联系，心灵上的联系也有同同理心上面的联系，然后觉得说啊、呃，就算他。有时候会是非常的啊、呃、高傲，有时候非常是不礼貌，或者是可能情绪上面会有一些啊、呃，就是比较爆发的地方。但是会觉得了解到他为什么会这样子的，然后也会一直为他加油，希望他能从那边走出来。所以觉得这个真的角色做的非常的啊、呃，就是很棒的一个啊、呃，很完全的一个角色。Thank you. <laughs> Your first film was the last verse from 2018, and that one is also, I think, about the loss of love and the loss of companionship, and that's the similarity between the last verse and the abandoned. Tell me a bit about. Your fascination with telling stories about love and about loss and like losing a, a spouse or losing a companion. Like, what is it about that aspect of life that makes you want to tell those kind of stories? 那当然，上次那部片最后的诗句里面，其实跟也是
有类似像是对于爱和另一半的失去。那为什么对于这个爱和失去另外一半这样子一个主题或者是母题非常的有兴趣？然后在这两部片都可以看到这样子的一个发挥。OK， 因为因为这个，我觉得是我真的是生命中的命命题，很谢谢他有看出来这一块，就是、嗯、呃呃，就是人人出生，然后跟自己爱的人有所连接，嗯、那要再道别这件事情，对我来说非常的困难，嗯，非常非常困难。嗯、那所以，所以我我想，这个可能是我创作的时候忍不住都会。讨论到这一块，那那最后失去可能稍微悲观一些，但是我觉得这一部对我来说是，我换了一个心情，可能还是在讨论这样子的题目，可是我用乐观一点的角度，嗯、或者说可以从悲悲观的地方重新站起来，面向可能更更不一样的风景的未来。嗯、呃、这个是我觉得在这两部片中同样讨论到，但是呃。有或许我有一点点成长，或或者叫做心情有一点点不一样。嗯哼，谢谢。So thank you for notice noticing that because that is something that I am very much、uh, a huge issue. That I want to continue to revisit and visit.、Uh, the reason for it is because I do think that you know, we're born to this world, and then just so happen to find that person to make that connection and become partners, and then. For whatever reasons,、uh, then you have to say goodbye to that to your loved ones. That sense of loss is something that very universal and something that is so deeply、uh, touching and moving, and then something that I want to、uh, examine through my films. But having said that. Uh, I do think that for the last film, the last verse, it is something that is definitely in total despairs and completely pessimistic. That's one way of looking at love and loss. And I do think that this particular film, even though that I'm examining the same two elements, love and loss, but at the same time, I want to be a little more optimistic. So I want to be a little more hopeful because there are there are different ways to deal with love and loss. And I do that maybe because I'm older now, or maybe because、uh, I have a different take on love and loss now、uh, as a more mature directors. And that's the the choices I made for this particular film, The Abandoned. Yeah, The Abandoned has, I think, a very optimistic ending. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.